Hi, Danielle. Hi, Mel. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm excited for this card. Uh, 55 in our series of all the podcasts we've done so far, and yeah. only a few left in the Major Arcanus Tarot series, isn't it? Yeah, we're on the the final stretch, the the home stretch here. We're crossing a finish line pretty soon, mm. and you know, out of the 22 cards, you know, starting at zero with the full, we're at 19. So we're 20 cards into a 22 card series. And I'm going to tell you, I'm feeling the energy of the sun with this one. I am feeling exactly what it says. You know, I yeah. love that we're doing this and we're really being mindful about how we're taking on this major arcana because we're allowing the energies to cross through for it to be an appropriate time. So we can exude the energy that mm. this card is showing up for. And, you know, this is why the series is taking a little longer for those who, who don't know is Mel and I are really trying to keep the integrity of the, the, the energy, the frequency of every card mm. that we're going through. And if you'll remember the moon was the, the last one, and moon energies can take some time to work through to where you get to your sun energy. And so yeah. now that we're entering the sun phase, it's time to bring out the card. So the sun radiates positivity and optimism. It's the source of all life on earth. So that is the energy that is being brought to you with the sun major arcana mm. card. With the sun, you are, you are the brightest light. You are feeling your best self. It, it's like... Um, they call it the most positive card in the entire deck, right? That's the card that's even more so than the world in, in its positivity, because even though it's exciting to end a cycle, there's something about getting to the final, the final few steps of this big cycle you're working in and, and being able to stand up tall and proud and say, I have done all of this work. Look where mm -hmm. I'm at. You can't help but feel the freedom of making choices to better yourself. So, um, the element of sun is going to be fire, passion, the pursuit of things that bring you joy. The ruling planet of the sun is the sun. And I know it's a star technically, but this is how they're, they're, they're creating this, um, major arcana. So the sun being all source of life, you have now been able to take care of yourself in a way where you have created a self-sustaining system for yourself. And mm -hmm. that comes from the internal outward. And so to have gotten through the deck and get to the sun card, you have been putting in the effort. You've been putting in the work. You've been consistent with your work. You've made the adequate changes, the, the surrendering, the sacrifices that need to be made to see yourself in this full potential. So when the sun card comes out to you, just I mean, allow this energy to wash over you. You really need to be in a receptive mode when you reach the sun. You need to be hands open, arms spread, ready to receive the abundance that is yours. And abundance and spirituality doesn't always correlate with the material world. So abundance can look like blossoming friendships and relationships, high quality family interaction. You can be getting a promotion at work. You could be finally in a group setting at work where things you're being heard, you're being seen, you're being asked to take on projects that, that bring joy to you. So this is all corners of your life, but be aware that whatever you're working in and your part of the journey, when the sun comes to expect that to happen in that department for you. It might not be an overall because again, we don't know what, what leg of the cycle, how many times you've been around the world, what, where you're at on your journey. And as we've stated before, you you walk the major arcana several times in your life. You, and, and you have to hit that entire cycle and then you go into another growth pattern. So this is a time to kind of really bask in that pattern, bask in the fact that you've made it this far. Um, this is a masculine, um, card. It's the, the, the pure divine masculine. This is the, 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 um, 
what you would call the God frequency, if you will, you know, this high potent, loving, caring energy coming from the divine masculine in its purest, rawest form. Um, this is going to be when, you know, when we talk the Zodiac or the astrology of it, it's a Leo. So the Leo is all about magnetism. When the sun is out, it lights up everything. There's not really, unless there's buildings or tall trees, you're not having shadow, right? The, the light illuminates all. And so to, when you're in this beautiful um, sun energy, you become magnetic to other energies that are really high in frequency, really high in its potency for you. So, you know, this is the place where you really want to acknowledge who you are. It's, it's really rough for some of us. Um, you know, and I can tell that from a personal journey to acknowledge that you, you should be the center of your own world, but the more you go through these cycles, the more it always comes back to you and the less selfish it feels, the less egotistical it feels. And I'm going to throw in a trigger word, the less narcissistic it feels, the more you begin to feel yourself, the more you're able to be yourself in the world around you and not just your internal self. And um, so yeah, we have I love some the sun card for all of them. Sorry. Oh, I, yeah. I just love the sun card for all of those things, because even just the process of thinking about it, you feel the, you know, the radiance, don't you? And the vitality and the, and the yeah. sense of freedom that that brings. And what is one of the most beautiful uh, things we can witness if we're not experiencing it is the pure unadulterated joy of a child that is in yeah. total free flowing state and mesmerized by whatever it is they're doing at that moment. Yeah. And I love that you said the, the child, because in the original tarot card, it is a child on a horse. Yes. And, and this child is this golden child of light and it's got a flag and it's on this beautiful horse and it's surrounded by all of this beauty. It's the sun, it's your inner child coming to life. And, and so I'm so glad that you stated that. Now we use keywords for the sun card and we do it in the upright position and in the reverse position. Okay. So in the upright position, you're looking at enlightenment, happiness, joy, feelings of success. Mm. Now, when you have this card in reverse and trust me, this is going to happen. And I'm going to follow up with some questions to ask yourself. You're going to be feeling a little bit pessimistic. You're going to have unrealistic expectations. You're going to possibly turn that um, beautiful Leo energy into its shadow side and be a little conceited um, and filled with the, the, the word, those, those keywords I was talking about that, you know, can hit its shadow. You're not going, you know, you can be in your narcissist traits. You can be lacking empathy. You can have these unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations. So when this card is in reversed in reverse, all of these really amazing feelings are being kept down because we're allowing the ego to overtake mm -hmm. what the sun's pure energy is meant to do for you. So, um, I'm going to do some follow-up questions for that reverse on that one, because when you're in the sun energy, you know, the questions that you really are asking yourself is what's next, right? Mm. So am I ready to show the world my truest self? Am I taking the time to feel this positive shift? I am I focusing on the negative? How am I, how am I reciprocating this feeling? So if you're receiving sun energy, right, then it's time to push that mirror back towards the world. Mm -hmm. You're receiving the energy. The sun is a plethora. You will never run out. It's an infinite source of energy, right? So when you're having this infinite source of energy coming your way, the best thing you can do is start to spread that joy pay it forward, be kind to strangers, go out of your way for your spouse or a friend, or maybe one of your children, you know, um, have a thoughtful stop at the coffee shop on your way into work for a coworker that, you know, mm -hmm. is struggling. You know, these are the types of little things that help keep this energy of the sun 
um, actively running through you and outside of you. And you're creating in a very spiritual way, this beautiful energy dome that, that starts to sit around you and you become the sun and people's response to you is going to change. And the way you respond to the world is going to change. We love the sun energy. Okay. So the more you can focus on, um, again, we are never going to negate our shadow. We do not live in a love and light world. We live in reality. Okay. So we're not asking you to shove all of your things away and pretend they don't exist. But for this moment, if the cards are telling you this, that means your subconscious is telling you this. It's time to enjoy yourself. Stop allowing this thing to override this thing. You know, don't let your mind override your heart and, and allow them to work seamlessly together. And you're going to start really feeling this potent energy that's coming your way with the sun. What do you got to say, Miss Mail? <laughs> Sorry, I just went silent for a second. <laughs> so when I was thinking about what you were saying about the reversed aspects of it, um, the, the, the sort of psychological component of that is when people often feel depressed. And if they feel, um, you know, their enthusiasm has been damaged and they generate some pessimistic outlook and that's linked with, you know, glass half empty or half full, uh, personality sometimes and also you know how many times has somebody tried to do something and then had a setback but yeah. one of the things around this is, is just because and I think we were talking about this the other night is just because it's happened in that way before in a in a similar project or work or relationship it doesn't mean to say even if the components look similar it does not mean to say that it happens at yeah. all in this way so you've got to embrace the energy of the optimism and hopefulness, which can be a challenge for people if they are again uh, regularly it's a challenge down. for me, Mel. Yeah, yeah. It, that's been a challenge in career, especially. And you've been through that journey with me, you know, yeah. where uh, my heart was so tied to everything I was doing that if it failed, it would really break me. Yeah. And um, you know, I I I preach the law of detachment, but for whatever reason, when it comes to career it's kind of like my baby that I've carried and it's hard to detach from. So yeah. we keep entering these spaces and <clears throat> what is, you know, what Mel's telling you is so true because the key to it, the key to what Mel's telling you is, is trust and faith in what people are saying. If we truly understood entrepreneurship, like what we're mm. doing, right. If you truly understand entrepreneurship, you're going to fail more times than you succeed because you only need the one success, right? And then you've become the entrepreneur you've dreamed of. How many fails do you get to get there? Of course, it's going to look similar. If you're dating people and you're in the dating rounds and you seem to be coming up against all of these obstacles when you're dating people, right? You, you're not going to just say, I give up on love entirely. You're just getting a little more conscious about the way that you're choosing a partner in this world. So things are going to look familiar, but at the same time, you're in new territory with a new person and a new gift for yourself, which is wisdom. So you're not in the same place, even though it feels familiar. So, you know, trust what Mel is saying in this, which is, you, you know, you got to get up again. It, it might look the same, but it's not the same. Yeah. You, you've learned your lessons. Trust those words because it took me to the point of, I had to learn how to trust the wisdom of another person, other people on this journey for entrepreneurship, for me to get back into the understanding of my logical and heart space and, and walking forward, because I just wanted to quit after the last time I just was, I was done, you know, towel thrown in. It was so hard for me. And, and then I just got back up one day and realized that this is part of the game. This is part of what you do. You're not meant to succeed every time. How else are you going to learn your lessons mm -hmm. and, and just allowing that to happen. And so, yeah, when, when we say get up and try again, it might feel familiar, but it's not, mm -hmm. we, we really mean it. And it's hard to get your head wrapped around that. It's definitely not linear thought but just beginning to trust and have faith in that idea to stand back up and the territory feels familiar, but you're not in the same place is a very key ingredient to getting through this next phase and understanding that the sun truly is handing mm. you all the light in the world. It kind of connects to me um, 
when we think about the free child spontaneous having fun and full of joy um children like that are what we call uh healthy attachments you know in a psychological sense children that have had some kind of adapted attachment or have an anxious attachment will may get those feelings at times but will struggle to express them because it's been thwarted pulled away atomized or uh, criticized so you lose those aspects of that free child that can't just run into the water and splash around and free flow and is because actually children aren't aware of time and space they're just aware right. of the present moment I think until about the age of seven or eight that's when they yeah. start to get that sense of uh, uh, being in, in the world in a different way them and, and other people so that's the tricky bit with people who've had those experiences and so part and in some ways you don't really uh, it's not about success or failure even you know with a lot of the projects I've run is you've got to be able to consistently adapt your course when needed so it may well be that you take a couple of steps and you go you sift and sort so in Abraham Hicks sense in terms of relationships all you're doing is is experiencing what you like and what you don't like and the next time you move up you might get 10 components of what you like and last time you got five and you don't start to see some of some of the other elements and so um yeah it's it's bringing that trust and hope and being aware of what has influenced you in the past and infiltrated your psyche but let's now imagine and there's even a couple of exercises in yoga where you can even there's a heart expansion one where you can stand in the back in the garden in the field with the sun literally shining down on you and imagining that it's coming into your heart center and radiating out and that's quite a nice perfect because yeah, you can feel that because um, I don't call it yoga, but every morning I step outside into the, the sunlight right. and during my morning ritual, uh, I don't know what to call it. You can call it whatever, insert prayer, ritual, invocation. Cool. Um, I, I literally put my hands up to the sky and I call in yeah. the golden white light and I, I face the sun and I just imagine it seeping all throughout every cell of my body. So yeah, yeah I mean, like guys, believe it or not, um, science backs me, you know, this is, this is an energy ridden world. And the more you're open to receiving energy, especially Mm. the higher quality, this pure energy, like from the sun, it begins to really leave its mark on you. And, you know, I'm, I'm curious in my world and I, you know, Mel and I both kind of play little games inside of our reality to see how things change, you know, compare it and then move forward. But I will tell you when, as soon as I started doing that morning ritual of mine, um, it took about a week and a week later, I really started seeing these positive yeah. impacts begin yeah. to happen. And I've been doing this well over a year now yeah. and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. It's really a great way for me to adjust to my reality you know, this reality that I live in every yeah. morning by having, you know, this, this moment of prayer, this moment of ritual. I also play with, I play fetch with my dog while I do it. So yeah. it brings out that inner child, you know, and I'm under the sunlight watching my dog live his best life with me. And I can't help but giggle and laugh because, you know, I'm upping my frequency by being in this moment. And then I'm re- asking all this beautiful energy to come my way, you know, it really will make a difference. So if it's yoga, meditation, prayer, walking in nature, taking a run, you know, mm. going and lifting weights, it doesn't matter. Well, however you move your body, however you try to get yourself into nature is a really important, you know, I love swimming in a pool, you know, mm. you know bodies of water has been a topic of uh, Mel and I today. So that makes sense. I'm bringing this up, but I love taking a swim in the pool. Yeah. There's some, and, the, and there's something about a connection between the water out in nature under the sunlight that really does it for me. And I just find myself in a very peaceful state of mind when I'm able to do that. Um, you know, I think the main thing I want to express in the sun card is if you're not feeling like the sun right now, that's okay too. And here's why the sun wants to make its way into your world. It's showing you this by showing up in your card reading. So that means that there's hope. That means that there is something there 
that's easily changed for you. Otherwise the sun wouldn't even shown up in the cards. Mm -hmm. So if the sun comes in reversed or it comes in upright, you are still in a very potent energy to get through whatever needs to be gotten through for you. So when you receive this card in reverse, just acknowledge that there might be little adjustments, tiny adjustments made consistently make for big changes. Right. I mean, they did for me. So, so, and then allow yourself the opportunity to make said changes because you're deserving of living under this beautiful sun energy and not in its reversed form. And so find this as a motivator and not something that keeps you stagnant. Like, don't be upset with yourself when it comes in reverse, find the way out so you can get this upright. And this becomes more of a game and less of a, a really hard journey for you. And I only say that because I made this journey really tough for me a few times and it's, it's just not worth it. It you don't have to go the hard way. You can really take this and, and use it as a set of skills for you to keep improving upon where you're at. Did you have anything else? No, I just, uh, I think you're right. You can look at kind of where you're at and what you might be struggling with. And is that the reverse aspect of that? But you can also think about other times in your life where you have felt maybe free as a child and splashed in the water or gone running in that sense of freedom that you feel or times when you've been on holiday and you're basking in the sun and you're enjoying, um, you know, you join that experience of total freedom of not being caught with time or space. We have some instability, so we are. Yeah, so Danielle's uh, Wi-Fi keeps dropping out. Um, so in terms of the sun, we've literally had physical experience of that in the UK because we've been blasted with the sun all week. Um, and I'm experiencing the beautiful benefits of the sun. Um, so it's easy to tap into that energy, isn't it? For me, I absolutely yeah. love when spring comes along and I can get out on my bike and, you know, um, and the other day experienced the utter joy of a child because my granddaughter, we, we took her to, uh, a really lovely little fountain. It wasn't that deep. And she just jumped in that water and splashed around for hours. And I shared oh. the uh, delightful video with you, didn't I, Danielle? You know, it was. Uh, yes, you did. It really, it's as cute as you think it is. <laughs> it really yeah. is. She's a precious girl. <laughs> All right. So before my, my Wi Fi drops back out, let's go ahead and get the tarot spread out of yep. the way for everybody. Now, this is a five card spread. Um, and it's going to, the first card is what is, how can I invite this feeling in daily? What is blocking my creativity slash inner child? Because the inner child really does bring the creativity forward Mm. for us. Um, what are the steps needed for this energy to emerge? And then what is my guidance message from the sun is the fifth and final card. So when I, um, when we get through the sun card, you're going to really miss the energy of the sun. If you're not trying to practice daily, how to bring more of this energy into your life. The one thing I've really noted in this energy, and, and that's something that I work really deeply in is energy, subtle, mostly subtle energy. So energies are very loud to me. Um, that the, that, uh, when I am out of sunlight energy, yeah, yeah, it's almost like this gaping missing piece of me. When I return back into sun energy, I begin to feel whole again. So there is a lot to say about the energy of the sun and what it brings to us and the things that we need to do to ensure that we have this level of energy coming into our lives on a consistent basis. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's brilliant to wrap it up with because uh, just the idea of uh, tapping into that, looking at the card 
or putting it as part of a spread or even being in a place where you've got that and and feeling the essence of the sun in your physicality and I think just wanted to make one reference towards Bruce Lipton's work on you know how uh, our cells actually uh, are influenced by our thoughts and our environment and experiences and the science has definitely come through in that sense okay what is the name of that cell work where it's like I, it's a biology term, right? Where the cells literally you down to the cell is what bases your, your mentality towards things. And like, when you start to self-correct and start having new thoughts, your cells will reform into, yeah. what is that called? So I can't even remember. His work is around the biology of belief and how our beliefs uh, influence the processes in the body and uh, where you, you know, where your, where your focus goes, your energy flows, but also the influence of that. But they've also found it in epigenetics, in public health research, um, that our cells are influenced by so many different things, that we're not static beings, and that some of the research is showing how our thoughts um, and ideas will influence the way that the uh sort of good cells working cells not the negative illness and disease cells in the body they can be minimized so a lot of things can actually change um as a result of uh doing some of that process okay okay uh wi-fi fell again so sorry everybody so we're gonna wrap this up so that you're having to deal with all of our technical issues. <laughs> but I did want to announce that we have a free webinar coming up over our, the introduction to our next workshop of break break free from the, the cycle that you're in. I, I'm so sorry. I've, I've missed, I've messed the words up. I already know I have. That's fine. Um, Breaking but it's free about uh, from your past and oh, mastering yeah. your destiny. Yeah. And mastering your destiny. And so if you'll join us on July 31st, we will be doing a live webinar and this is free of charge. So feel free to join us. Come, come prepared with a journal and a pen. And we're going to teach you some really cool psychological and spiritual um, ways to maneuver your world that we haven't quite got to hit on our podcast. So this is more of a directed way of bringing in new things to help you manage your inner world so that you can show up and really be the person you, you, you see yourself in your biggest stream. So please join us. And there's going to be more information as we get closer to the date, but it's July 31st. So mark your calendars. Don't forget to join us on Facebook at Mel and Danielle. And if you have any questions for us, please feel free to email Mel Danielle CC at gmail.com. Outside of that, everybody enjoy your sun energy. I know we are. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to do that this week when I take a road trip. So I'm going to bask. Yes, in that for... <laughs> yes, it'll be and great. swim <laughs> and finally yeah. swim in the oh. sea. <laughs> swim. <laughs> so right, thank you, Danielle. Yeah. Look forward to the next one. Me too. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>